Okay everyone, welcome back to uh, this, this is the first part uh, of the Curtis P40B Warhawk build and it's the Airfix um, 148th kit and uh, this is the scheme I'm picking, so it's a famous scheme um, R.T. Smith uh, from the Flying Tigers Squadron over in China um, I got a real thing for the uh, Flying Tigers, uh, I really enjoy the, the whole story and the idea behind it and the American Volunteers group. Um, actually, whilst building this, I listened to an audio book about that. Forget the name, I'll see if I can stick a picture up at, at this point. Um, that uh, really sort of helped um, get me going for, for the subject, I must admit. So it's a good thing, I'd, I'd recommend anyone, if you're going to do a subject... Uh, build something and you're building it on a specific subject, you know, try and give it a bit of historical background, it's, it's really good. Hearing about them and all the stories, there were some amazing things that went on over there. So uh, into the build, this is what would be classed as Tamiya's good, uh, Tamiya? Uh, Air is is um, good plastic, I suppose. Uh, it's the more harder plastic, it's that kind of um, brownie grey sort of colour and um, it does work a lot better than their usual kind of white bluish soft plastic that they do so uh, happy with that that's always a good thing uh, now the cockpit is extremely detailed and what I like about this kit as well is it's one of the main ones in this scale that get it right so that cockpit floor is curved like it should be as in the top of the wing um, and we've also got quite a lot of sidewall detail and we've got two different chairs. Uh, this one has a specifically different chair, the squared back chair, not the rounded chair. Uh, and you get both. Uh, so that's very useful. Um, I, was, I was very happy with that. And uh, we've got some ejector pin marks on here that I was showing there, so I just sanded them back. And also a bit of burring on um, all of those bars. So uh, just using Tamiya Extra Thin, after a little bit of scraping, whatever's left, just running a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin around there melts that tiny bead of plastic away and settles it down. And uh, the construction's very straightforward here, actually. It's um, impressive, really, for Airfix. It's quite good. It all slots together. There's bags of detail there. And it's just what you want, really. So no complaints there. Uh, so I don't know what that is there. <laughs> some sort of oxygen tank, possibly. fuel. Well, not a fuel tank, but it's some sort of tank behind the seat. Um, and now we start with the uh, the chair. So we've got the frame going on the back there. Again, you can see the, the, the very nice uh, fit there. And that's perfect. You know, all it needs is, is a set of belts. Um, which in this case, it's actually quite different. And here you can see the two different chairs that I mentioned. So, there's your options. That's brilliant. You know, you can't ask for more than that, really. Now, again, parts for the cockpit, uh, it really does come together really, really quite nicely. Um, that's the control stick going in there, and it's got the, um, well, control levers, I suppose, I don't know what it would be, the, the, the rod going back there, uh, which goes under the chair, so it's a nice touch. Now, I wanted to add a little bit of detail to the chair, and the only one that I could see that fits uh, an AVG Warhawk was this one. Um, which is a resin seat, and I noticed that they had those loops on the back. Now, this has been so long, I apologise, I looked it all up at the time and I knew what it was, but this build's been on pause for an awful long time, so I've actually forgotten what they did, but they're a kind of, um, uh, they're tied to the back of the chair, really, So, and there's something to do with something. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, let me know in the comments if you know what that's for. So I'm just trying to make those up um, with a bit of stretch sprue here and uh, made that into a loop and then just using Tamiya Extra Thin um, glued it together in, yeah, make it look roughly like the picture if I'm honest uh, nothing more than that, just kind of gluing it on and hoping for the best and uh, it was a nice effect, it was something I wanted to add because I saw it there, I thought it would be quite good uh, to put in uh, a little bit fiddly here by the looks of it but I think we get there in the end and Tamiya Extra Thin is really good for this. Anything you want to do with Plasticard, stretch spru stretched sprue or anything like that, it's really uh, useful because it, it bites into it very quickly. 
and um, those plastics uh, so like plastic card and stuff seems to be quite a lot softer so it has an effect on it and there you can see that's all I wanted to do um, looks the part adds a little bit of something different in the back there I'm just kind of measuring it up and make sure it all lines up now so with that, that, that out of the way, the next thing I wanted to do was get the canopy masked up, which is something I always like to do early because it's a job I don't enjoy. So I don't want to get to it when I need it. I want it done and out of the way when I feel in the mood for it. So I've just used some washi tape there and um, cocktail stick around the panel lines and pressed it into them. And uh, ready for paint. Sorry, that was all the... Um, that was all the bits there ready to go. And we're going to paint them with interior green uh, the Mr. Color version, so that's 351 for US interior green, and that went down no problem. And I used uh, Rapid Thinner for that, I think. The Mr. Color Rapid Thinner. I'm just using my wet palette there again. We've got a video on the channel about how to make a wet palette if you want to know what that's about. Check uh, the description below and you'll see uh, where I've got it linked. And with the Citadel paints, just the, the black paint, starting to touch in some of the details here. Um, so we're getting the handle on the control lever or control stick sorry and I, I like using citadel paints for this sort of job it's very good they they, they work quite well but and, and they're quite heavily pigmented as well so um, I was quite happy to uh, utilize them in this uh, this moment it's nice to add a bit of color uh, even though black you know where, where it's all green it's nice to add a bit of contrast should i say so that really comes into its own when you start painting up stuff on the side walls it brings it to life a little bit then and it's uh, it's always worth doing um, as much as you can try and add a bit of detail because you, you never know how much is going to be seen and it's a, it's a relatively enjoyable part of the hobby i'm sure we all don't mind it and the more you put into it the more you get out of it so i find um you know, going that extra mile sometimes is worth it. But again, you know, if, if you know it's not going to be seen or you're going to close up the canopy, then uh, equally, as much as I like to add a lot of detail, I, I do quickly rattle through it as well. So it depends on the build. Uh, this one I wanted to take my time because there was so much there. Uh, I was quite happy to go ahead and paint up as much as I could. And we've got uh, decals coming a bit later to add to some of these sidewalls to give you the instrument um, dials on some of... I don't know what they'd be, I, I guess, well, instruments on the, on the side walls. Uh, there's some sort of uh, gizmo that does something. And there we are with it painted up and it's, it looks a bit lumpy, but it does self-level quite nicely. And that'll level off as it dries. It dries quite fast, being acrylic paint. Um, and here, I think we've got the headrest I'm gonna be painting up. We've got straps there on that tank and the tank itself could have been a different color, but uh, it's not, you don't really see it, so I haven't painted it. It's simple as that. Um, like I was just saying, you know, I don't find it, it's only worth uh, spending time on things that are going to pay off, is uh, my personal view. If you're not going to see it, there's really no point spending a bit of time on there. Um, I'm trying to get a nice sharp line down the side there where it joins. And um, here now we've got the black bits all painted, and I've painted in some of the wiring detail that's on there as well. Just painted that kind of brown colour. Didn't really know what colour to do it. And now we're going to gloss it up with Super Clear 3 from uh, Mr. Colour. And that's finned with self-leveling thinners. That goes down really nicely, gives you a good uniform gloss coat, ready to add some of these decals I was talking about. So we've got an instrument panel um, decal all together, and then we've got sidewall uh, decals as well, which is kind of this, look, this part here, for instance, is, is a kind of warning um, plaque, I suppose. And um, this is the start of the show, so getting all of those dials in uh, to the right place. Really, uh, it takes some work, but once you do it, it's very effective. As you'll see a little bit later, I was really quite pleased with this as a decal straight out of the um, out of the box, an instrument panel, sorry, straight out of the box. I think it looks really good at the end. And that solver set really got those decals melting in there. And here you can see they've sunk in and um, gone on to the different bezels and, and the raised parts everywhere they need to be and it's um it's coming together it's starting to look pretty good so i'm relatively happy with that and we've got different parts all over it 
And another thing, I like to go on through the build and paint up all the bits as I go forward. So I, I just, you know, get ready for the construction all in one go. Uh, so an ingenious way of doing the gear base, if you ask me. Uh, I think that's um, about the best way you could have handled that section. And then we've got the uh, air intake, I believe, uh, which is the, the big chin at the front, makes the P40 very um, iconic. And that all slots in quite well, although word of warning, I actually glued this too far to one side. So I, I don't know what the answer is here, really. I suppose glue the front portion of that bit, the, the bit at the rear. Uh, the bit at the front goes in fine, and then this other section at the rear, which has got that swooping down long piece there, I've actually glued it too far to one side, so when you line it all up uh, with the wing underneath, uh, it's, it's too far to one side, and it doesn't quite look right, unfortunately, but it's a small problem to have. So then we're on to uh, bringing it all together. It's a bit of a dry fit at the minute because I wanted to do some weathering, but I was just seeing how it was all going to go together. And there you can see it makes for an extremely detailed little uh, cockpit tub in there. Cracking stuff from Airfix on this one. You know, they are hit and miss. This is one of the hits, I've got to be honest. After building the whole thing and, and getting right to the end at this point when I'm talking to you about it, it is a star of a kit. It really is. It's, it's a cracker. Um, very impressive the whole way. So it's, uh, it's well worth a shout if you're into uh, P40s, it's worth looking at. So a uh, little bit of a tricky fit to get that lined up. It's, it's more about just clipping it in really and knowing where you've got to do it. So you just want to have a look on some of that side detail um, and make sure it sort of clips in. Uh, now, this is one of the, the few kits where it's actually beneficial to not have molded on seat belts or anything because the Flying Tigers one just had lap belts. And they were quite specific so copying that picture earlier that i mentioned because it's hard to find a picture of any flying tiger uh, p40s um, i've done the best i can by making this out of masking tape and using wire to make the clasps and the um, uh, buckles so uh, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it it's a little bit overscale but uh, i think the thickness of the strap is okay but the wire is a little bit too thick it could be a lot finer but you know it looks the part it's just hinting at it really and there you go it's it's in in situ it's quite pleased with that and it, as you can see it's quite a um uh it's quite unique well unique i suppose that you don't have the shoulder harnesses and makes for a nice change as well so another one of the quirks of the flying tigers um not many differences across the airframe. That was really it. The um, the, the chair and the, uh, or the seat, sorry, and the harnesses is about the, uh, the majority of it. And then we're into the weathering. So I'll leave you with a little bit of music while we do this, but it's Now it's time to add in um, some glass uh, sort of lensing effect, I suppose, to some of these dials, uh, which is a, a really effective thing to do. And this is just using that glue and glaze 
and as you can see just just dabbing it into where the actual glass part would be on the uh, on the dial and um, you know make it make sure there's a nice good lump there so as it settles down it goes clear and then it gives you the lensing effects which hopefully you'll see in the next shot so that's it you just got to let that dry and then as if by magic it looks like there's glass or, or in each of those dials and it's extremely effective now you do that after last that wants to be the last job before you uh, close the cockpit up because you can you know you wouldn't want to go over any of those dials with oils now that you've got the PVA in there would be my suggestion and I just want to add some pigments in there as uh, these Warhawks were in very dusty areas so just a bit of scuffing um, down in the footwells and it's just given that effect to see there's a bit of dust kicked around in the bottom there which I'm sure there would have been I'm sure they would have been knocked about quite a bit judging by what they look like on the outside I haven't done any chipping that's another thing you could do here it'd be a classic uh, ex a chance to do some chipping but I don't like to do that myself I don't like uh, don't like heavily chipped models And there we go with that fit again, just to get that instrument panel in. Um, I would probably suggest doing it like this, doing it from one side and then clipping it in. I think the instructions have you put it in after you've put the two sides in, kind of putting it down and twisting it, but it didn't really work that well. And now we're ready to uh, go ahead and get everything joined up. So uh, you can see the fit going in there. It was just a glimpse of it at the bottom of the cockpit floor it's uh, slotted it's just great you see that there it's just brilliant absolutely brilliant um, piece of engineering from from airfix all, all the way through this really uh, this could be a weak point but if you get it right this does actually work pretty good it's okay you just want to make sure you've got the front bit glued in and then the rear part glued in don't just chuck glue in there and, and expect it to fit perfectly because it's not quite as good as that but certainly if you um if you glue one end of it and then glue the rear end of it say uh, you'll find that it all it's actually okay I didn't need to put any filler in there I just needed to sand it down um, flush a little bit so it looked right and um, these were impressive as well this was a I was a bit worried seeing this from Airfix putting those with uh, what am I going to call that the wing fillet um, I felt like that could have caused all manner of problems if it wasn't done correctly, but thankfully it's engineered beautifully. As long as you glue it where it joins, uh, the wing snaps in. It's lovely. Amazing. <laughs> it's surprising because it's airfix, I suppose. You know, that's a sort of Tamiya kind of uh, thing you'd expect. And seeing it in an airfix kit is enough to make you uh, slightly worried. We can see good detail there, so we've got raised rivets all across that. Um, and now it's uh, it's time for the, the main event. So once the fuselage was together, I checked some of the seams just to see if there was any major work I had to do, and there wasn't, so that's good. Uh, so this rear, rear part of the wing absolutely snaps in there when you get it right. It locks in at the front, snaps in at the back, and then the two uh, upper parts of the wings slide underneath that wing fillet and snap in around the... Um, the aileron and it's really quite good it's extremely well done and it's it's surprisingly so so it you know you can I don't know what all the boxings of this are like I know airfix do have many problems regarding um, quality control however this kit as a kit judged on its own is uh, is pretty good and here possibly you can see this this bit where the two holes I'm just I had my finger on it then it wasn't what I was pointing at it's just to one side to the right there there you go I've just stuck it too much on the right side of the fuselage so it's better not to stick the rear of it so if you could move that now and then cement it in that would be the way the way you'd want to do it was I just glued it to the side of the fuselage and obviously that's um that's something I've got to live with but it being underneath and this isn't a showpiece or anything that was fine so um, I did find one side of the wing uh, root join here I had to add in some um, perfect plastic putty which was the best thing there because I wanted to preserve the raised rivets and I didn't know what else to do really so it was a tiny tiny gap 
Well, obviously, if I didn't use the uh, plastic putty, it must have been a tiny gap. Um, so that was that, really. It was okay. Um, and then I've just gone around trying to sort all of these seams out here and there, uh, where I've used the sprue goo to uh, settle everything in and get it right. Using the trusty Infini sanding sticks and still just working on those... Um, I don't know what they're called. I don't even know what to begin to, what <laughs> to call them, but they're an iconic feature of the of the um, P40. So those lumpy bits, which are part of the wheel well. Um, now, again, a, a technique that a lot of modelers use is for the leading edge join, where you get a, you get a thin line there. Just using super glue on that because it's not a it's not a strong um, area. That you, you know is going to take a lot of flexing or anything, so it's perfect to to use super glue. And the propeller hub. Now this actually is a bit of a head scratcher because there's only there's not many ways a, a kit company can go about this. So you know you're going to have to do something. But looking at the references, you don't have these gaps around um, the rear portion. So where that join join is there, that's not going to be there. There's not going to be any any gap there, or if there is, it's not certainly nothing like that. It'd be a hint of it. Um, so, there was only one real way to get a, go about that, and that was to um, think about cutting the propeller blades off, away from the hub, uh, so that we could fit them afterwards, and um, glue this section together, and get all of that sanded, sanded off. So that's what I chose to do. I've done this before on P40s, um, and with a few other aircraft, so the only thing for it is to take a deep breath and cut them off. So using my razor saw, trying to get as much of a flat cut as possible. Um, you just got to really go for it, I suppose. Uh, and the flatter the cut, the better, because what you ultimately are going to be doing is drilling um, a hole in there and, and putting a rod or a pin in to take uh, the blade when you want to put it back into the hub. So uh, I've flattened those off now and just given them a bit of a, um, a mark here so that I know where the centre line is, roughly. That's all, it's all by eye. I know you could do this a lot in a much better way, but me going by eye across, um, you know, the vertical and the horizontal leaves me a point in the middle, which is roughly in the centre. So after making a little mark, I get my uh, uh, drill bit and drill the hole to take the piece of metal rod. And that's, um, that's how we do that. And I've already got the other two bits in. And uh, checking those uh, so that when you put the blade on, it's nice and flat and it joins up. And when you're happy with that, you can join it all together. And uh, I actually left the, it, for this, th this way of doing it, I left the, the blades on, glued the hub in, joined the two parts together, and then pulled them off afterwards. That's to make sure that then that center portion is in the right area. And then with super glue, I've just tried to uh, fill in all of those holes. Again, it's simply it's not a not an area that's going to be stressed, so super glue should be perfectly adequate for for filling those gaps. There we go. Uh, that pin there as well. I don't know what that was um, for. It must have been on it, but it doesn't fit. It was fouling this um, end cap, so I just cut it off, and then the end cap went on much better. Uh, I didn't actually film it, I should have, when it was sitting up a little bit. Um, and then another great feature of this model as well is the tailplane construction. So you've got the horizontal stabilizers that are um, they're fitted so that you can only put one in one way and one in the other. So you can't really mix them up. And then when you've got those on, the elevators just sort of clip in as well. Um, it's obviously almost too tight there. And then to lock all of that in, um, you clip the rudder on and um, it holds it all together. It's all poseable. Um, I did choose to kick the rudder a little bit and the elevators down a bit. Uh, and then the last thing to do was drill out the exhaust. That's something I always like to do. These little things really lift a model. I mean, you'll notice in this one, I'm not actually adding any aftermarket. This is all. Uh, either building it out of the box or just a little bit of scratch building or super detailing detailing to enhance the the, uh, the details and the finer points of the kit. Well, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You know, it's very easy to throw 
um, and Edward's set a, a kit and resin and on all this, that and everything else, uh, which I don't mind doing for one kit. And equally, I happily build a kit out of the box uh, the next time. So uh, it all helps with the skills, I think. It's worth doing, you know, it's trying to do these things. Instead of buying resin exhaust, just drilling them out, It was that was no problem. And it was a bit of an exercise in trying to drill central. <laughs> and then the, the other trick again, uh, just using a bit of Tamiya Extra Fin to smooth out the hole. And any small bits of plastic just uh, melt away when you do that. So just starting with the painting stage on this one, uh, it was primed with Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Grey, which is what I'm uh, uh, liking at the minute from Mr. Hobby, and it gives a nice um, smooth finish. So after checking everything was in order, um, I've painted it with this brown colour, which is a kind of a mix with some of the Tamiya browns. Um, it's nothing specific, it's just trying to, uh, using the internet to try and kind of get a, a nice, uh, it's dew point colours I think they're called, so you've got the brown and the green from that, so I was just trying to colour match it. Um, and then it was time to have a go at this camouflage pattern, which on the face of it looks really quite simple. Uh, however, um, it is a bit tricky because it's it's hard uh, it's hard edge camo. It's it, it, even when when you see some of the reference pictures, and there are quite a lot of them, it's extremely hard edge camo. There's no feathering right right down to the smallest part. So. The only way I know how to get around that is either using the masking tape, which I wasn't really um, happy to do, or using the white tack like I'm doing here and just pressing it down quite firmly so it, it means that there's not a lot of bleed. But it's very easy to get yourself confused and either mask the opposite of what you want, so where you're masking the brown, where you're putting the uh, white tack, you want to remember you're, you're masking the brown. It's very easy to view it as... Um, what you're putting down is where the green's going to be and then when you peel it off <laughs> obviously there's a whole load of green missing because you've included the white tack in your mind as being green so just something you want to check um, and then I noticed in the scheme that it's it's got uh, the roundels uh, were, were left which is what I just showed in that previous clip uh, so when it was painted up they actually uh, left a clear circle for the roundels to be painted on and of course this was not uh, going to be using that because it was a Chinese uh, bird so they were just left blank so to do that I used the circuit cutter a uh, cricket cutter sorry and uh, just cut some circle masks out of uh, some masking film and stuck them on in the right place and then continued with the white tack and once I was happy that the white tack was all uh, in the right area I'm then using washi tape here just to fill in the gaps because it's cheap that's why you know five or six rolls I think you can pick up for a pound and it's perfect stuff for modeling because it's very tacky but at the same time it doesn't um, it doesn't hold very tight so it easily lifts so there's no worry about peeling paint or anything and actually the masking tape I've used on the underside I almost had a problem with it peeling the paint thank uh, goodness I used MRP um, and that's a point the underside is pretty much just a slightly lightened version of MRP ROM76 because uh, it's not meant to be the grey it was a sky blue used on these uh, Chinese um, uh, P4E Warhawks and then so that was sorted it was time to peel that off and uh, again it looks like I'm being a bit rough here because it's, it's sped up but you want to be a little bit gentler <laughs> than what it makes it look like here uh, peeling this off because you, you, it's worth being careful and you'll see when it's all off that uh, the the roundel masks worked uh, worked really well. I was really pleased with those, and it gives the the correct effect that I was after. Um, it's always tricky doing something like this, this sort of masking job, but it is nice when it pays off. It was a sort of couple sessions uh, getting this sorted, uh, but you know you've just got to kind of persevere really, and um, and get on with it. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, and we're just getting it off now and all we've got left really is uh, the roundels to take off and uh, I had to get under those with, with um, tweezers to peel them off you've got to be careful not to rip any of the paint as you're doing that um, and there you go it's an effective scheme it's, it's quite sort of tight edge and I noticed there was a couple of bits that 
Uh, this is the unfortunate side of it. You've got all this waste. I've saved some of the white tack there, but the majority of it does need to be chucked, unfortunately. Um, and then I'm just checking, I've got, the, there was painted over places to put the tigers on, and um, I've noticed that some of the camouflage I haven't done quite enough, so I'm just using the white tack again, just doing it like spot masking, I suppose. You know, just doing a, a little bit, and then I spray the green in tight after putting a bit of washi tape around there. So before you take the roundel mask off, you want to be sure that you're happy with everything. You can see there in the background, that's the finished scheme, and the roundels there, certainly on the left wing, you can see how, how nice it is to have that sharp um, area there uh, for the masking. And then it's the beginning of decals. So uh, I did gloss coat this uh, this one. Some of the this is actually going to be used this footage for a um, uh, decal tutorial as well that I've done. Uh, so I've done this one with, is glossed, and then I did a, another model that uh, was decal straight onto matte. Uh, I'm happy to do both, but I, I'm finding that I'm preferring to work on a gloss coat at the minute. So that's what I use with this, and we're just starting on the wheels. So uh, you get. Uh, circle decals to go on the wheel hubs which give you those three colours which makes it look quite nice quite an iconic feature of the uh, flying tiger birds and they went on nicely enough um, you had to use some uh, setter so I've got micro sole, micro set and solver set I'm using here and my uh, preferred way of doing it is uh, place the decal put on the micro set on top of it not underneath it um, and I, I assume it would soak through. And then when that's uh, set a little bit, I then go over it with the micro sole to let it kind of go down into the details. And if there's any issues and I can see that it hasn't sunk into the de details, I'll either use a blade or a pin or something. On these wheels, for instance, there was four rivets. So I pushed a pin into where those rivets are, a bit more solver set, and it sucks the decal straight into the hole, which is uh, what you want. Um, and I've got all the other uh, decals cut out as well. So there's the prop blade decals, which went on really nice. I cut around the uh, carrier film there to make it easier. That was all one block, but I just cut it apart. And then it was the star of the show, uh, the tiger mouth. Now there's no real easy way around this, you just got to kind of keep going. This took really about an hour to get this in a way that I was happy with. But as it's the main feature of the model, uh, it's worth spending the time on it, I feel. So I'll leave you with this now, with a bit of music, and you can see my attempt at putting these together, and I'll come back a bit later.
Now, this uh, red stripe uh, on the rear of the fuselage, uh, I tried to use it as a decal, as I said I was um, doing the demonstration, but there was just no way of making that work, I'm afraid. I don't think, I think it was meant to be curved, and they hadn't done that, so I decided to spray it, so it was simple enough. It was a lot easier to spray that. I got a feeling that if you want something to go straight around a fuselage like that, then that it has to be curved. I may be wrong, but it's not curved, it's just a straight line on the decal sheet, so I don't think there's any way you can ever make that work. It's always going to have a crease somewhere. Um, but maybe you could let me know in the comments below whether you've done this and um, you've done it successfully, or, uh, you know, there would be a method of getting that done. But spraying it was just as easy. And actually, it's meant to be a dull red, which I think I got uh, spot on here. Just used the Tamiya red over a very light misting of white just to settle it down otherwise it would have gone on quite nicely on the underside where it's almost a white colour but the camouflage would have showed through. Uh, so I let quite a lot of it show through and it's given this dull red colour which is almost exactly what it looks like from what I can tell so I was pleased with that and now that was sorted we were ready to go on and get the rest of the decals on uh, which was a much more straightforward uh, process. So the roundels it, now, this kit has been brilliant from the start. Everything's br perfect. The, the, the decals are lovely. It's all, you know, where, where can it go wrong? Well, I, there was a chap, I forget the name, um, who left a comment in the previous video saying, um, did you notice that the round holes have 11 triangles when they should have 12? And I thought, e that can't be right. And I looked it up, and they are meant to have 12 points, and these decals have 11 points. <laughs> So why they've done that, I'll never know. Very strange. I, I've got to be honest, I wish I didn't know that. I do know it now. Um, I can live with it. But it is a strange uh, it's a strange thing to do. And that will explain why I couldn't get these squared up. Because <laughs> there's not enough triangles. There's not enough points on the... Um, uh, there's not enough points there to make it even. Because there's 11, not 12. <laughs> should be three on the top, three on the bottom, and three on each side. But that's... That's not how it happens. So uh, there we go. Something to bear in mind if you're going to tackle this kit. Maybe have a look and see if you can find some aftermarket roundels. Uh, then another iconic feature of this uh, kit is to get the tiger on, which is the best part of it for me. That is the shark's mouth and the tiger is what this is all about. So a uh, really exciting bit to get this on. And uh, where I've measured it in, in the previous step with the white tack, uh, it's worked perfectly. So it fits nicely in there. Um, and I was very happy with that, very pleased, uh, because I think you'll find that they pretty much painted the tiger to fit into uh, that green blob that was painted on there by the uh, ground crew. So very happy with that. And these decals went down very well, very nicely. I was surprised how well they went down. And just using my reference material here that I've got on my phone, I'm just checking the position just to see what angle it's at. And is that, is, is that actually quite an acute angle? It's pointing upwards quite a lot. So. More than I perhaps would have done, there you can see in the picture. We've also got some chipping there in the wing route that I'm going to have to tackle, but that's for the next video. Uh, so as we um, carry on out of here, I'm just uh, just making sure that's settling down nicely. And then we've got to have a look on the other side, because there's a tiger on both sides. And there's a bit of stencil data. And here you can see that tiger's settling nicely as well. Um, I did break the tail on that, and I've shown that in the uh, decaling tutorial, so worth checking out because you'll see uh, it's unfortunately going to be a lot of this footage again, but there's a bit more um, that I haven't talked about, and I'll go a bit more into depth on how I've actually gone about getting these decals to uh, to conform in the way I want, because this 4 and 7 was combined with carrier film, and I've cut that off because I find it's a lot more... Um, a lot easier to avoid any any problems and it makes it look painted on so uh, I cut around that quite nicely I should have cut this down apologies I don't know what I was doing there off camera but I was doing something trying to get this seven sorted because I've cut the carrier film off <laughs> there you go uh, so uh, easy thing here is to um, check in the reference material that the seven and the four line up straight with that panel line so Regardless of what the rest of it looks like, as long as the 7 and the 4 are, are parallel with that line, the rest of it's okay. So it's just a matter of making sure the 7 is actually straight. And that made um, uh, lining up quite no quite easy, to be honest. It's very easy to go uh, over the top and get a bit lost with it and think, you know, overthink the process. But uh, it actually went on, went on nicely. So... 
I did choose to leave most of the stenciling off. I just hand-picked a bit here and there. And, uh, yeah, I figured that, that you're not going to have seen it much in the field. Um, and I didn't want to add it. It's my model. I, I chose not to. <laughs> so uh, here I'm just showing you how um, I like to uh, get stuff into the panel line. So if after all of what I've done with the setting solutions hasn't worked, then uh, I like to run through the panel lines. This is with an old airbrush needle, especially on these Airfix kits where the panel lines are quite deep. You can follow it quite well and it will just force it down nicely. Um, and then I don't use a setting solution. I'd use a varnish. This would be before varnishing. And then I'd be looking for the varnish to seal that in. Whereas the setting solution I can find almost gets under it and lifts it back out of the panel line. And then you have to go through the process again. So, uh, you yeah, know, just try the method yourself. See how you, uh, see how you get on. That's all you can do really. Um, and here just showing again, just trying to force things into the panel lines. It's very noticeable, noticeable, noticeable there where I've got the red band that's been painted so it's gone straight into the lines and then you've got this four and seven which is kind of floating a little bit outside of it so I'm very keen on getting those in there. Um, I always like to get, get the decals bedded down as nice as possible because I like to get a panel line wash to run straight through it uh, because I think you know it should be treated the same. As you can see now just having a look around it seeing where I've cut through the decals compared to not cutting through the decals and trying to get them bed to bed down and uh, it's all starting to look the part now unfortunately something I didn't notice until the end is the uh, the roundels are not correct on this kit they should have 12 points to the star but they've got 11 which is confusing again it's like a few things that uh, airfix do um, they got it right in 172nd but they've got it wrong in 148th so uh, it really is one of those things you need to be told rather than you'd notice, but yeah, it would be nice to have the correct wing roundels. But nevertheless, as you can see, we're starting to get right to the point. Uh, the strange tail wheel is just emulating what's in the uh, in the photo. It's cocked at a that position for some reason. Um, we're just getting into the final stages now, just showing you there that the uh, the canopy is going to be unmasked. And fingers crossed, hope for the uh, best. And then it's into weathering, so I've got all the parts that I want left off the model off at the minute. And some of these I'm going to actually glue on now, uh, after the initial stage. So this has had a wash, and I'm just trying to get everything up together now. Uh, so we've got the gun sight there, which is, I think it's the gun sight. I think it's something to do with the gun sight. It's, it's, it's like a piece of glass in front of the uh, windscreen. Proving a little bit fiddly, but there you go, it's, it's on. And Tammy are extra thin again with this. And uh, I don't find that an issue myself. Although, you, you know, you need to be a little bit careful. Certainly on the windows around the, the back, the side windows, it's uh, it's a bit of a problem. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry here, but you can see that I'm trying to show the point that I'm putting in the propeller blades that we left off initially. And then on to the weathering of the underside. So this is straightforward. You can see I'm using pretty much uh, ammo washes there. And I'm just really just you know hitting it for for how i feel it it looks really getting some streaking getting some uh, dust throwing off and uh, hitting some of the panel lines at uh, super speed and it's all about the blending brush that's the secret i mean we've shown it uh, uh, many times but for my weathering it's it's all about putting it in the panel line and using the the wide blend blending brush to pull it out and drag it down with the airflow And you can see as I go along, it starts to pick out different panels that you couldn't see before. And that's the whole point, it's just giving definition.
Then on to pigments as well for the uh, undercarriage and the wheels. So I, I don't mind using pigments in this um, scenario. In fact, I quite like it actually. Uh, it gives a nice dusty appeal. I usually cut through that with some oils or some of the uh, MIG washes occasionally just to give like a grease stain, that sort of thing. Very effective, very simple stuff. We've seen it before on the channel. There's a sort of selection of the, the washes and um, items that I've used. I've basically gone for all of the MIG stuff. I haven't used oils so much on this. And uh, reasonably happy with that. So the last thing to do is just to get the aerial on, which is a bit of a strange one, this. So it's, it's on the wingtips and then it's one line connecting the wingtips and then you pull it back and it, it has a kind of triangle point touching the fin. So that's just Ushi Fred, dab of super glue on each side. I'm just trying to show you where it actually is, how thin it is. And there we go, that's the line. And it's pretty good with this elastic stuff, so it's hard for it to ping off. And that completes the build. So I'll leave you with the photos now. As always, thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, following the channel. Uh, I really do appreciate all the feedback, the comments and um, the continuing support. So as always, uh, if you like what you see, do consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I will see you in the next video.